everybody, it's Renee from Tailspin Farm. It has been a while since I have been on here. Um, I think the last video I did, I was sitting in front of my garden in August or July, and it was warm out. And we are no longer warm out. We are today, but we're heading down. Um, today, I think, was probably our last warm day here in mid-Michigan. Um, so I am glad you came to join me this afternoon. I wanted to get another video on because I have been working up um, a storm lately with stuff and I am actually getting ready to do a show tomorrow and then I have a trunk show in November so I wanted to show you some of the things that I have done um, before we get too far into that I've had quite a few new subscribers here on the channel so I just want to welcome all of you I'm glad you're here I'm not sure um, just the last few weeks I've had quite a few of you subscribe to the channel so I don't know if you found me somewhere or what the, if you if you found me like through Instagram or Facebook put a note down below in the in the comments and let me know how you found us um, so uh, I will do an introduction I haven't done an introduction in a while and um, just tell you a little bit about me I am a crocheter um, a knitter a spinner um, a sometimes dyer and um, I raise Angora rabbits, so I've done that for um, over 15 years now. I've been raising the rabbits, so it's been a long time that we've had those. Um, I I got into spinning. Um, I loved um, lost arts. I loved old skills, and so I was always on the hunt for something new and different, and I had the opportunity to take a drop spindle class, and I fell in love with spinning. Um, I felt it was something that just instantly came to me. I, I loved it. And I went on the hunt for my first fiber animal. And at the at that time, we were on a small hobby farm. And I had chickens. Those were my gateway drug into farming. Um, and I wanted to find a, a small fiber animal that I could raise on the farm and get um, my own fiber for spinning. So... Um, that's what led me to the Angor Rabbits. I went to a fiber festival with a friend and I had never seen an Angor Rabbit. I did not know they existed and I fell in love with them. And, um, that year my husband got me two of them for Christmas and that started Tailspin Farm. We, right now I have, um, 14, um, but we have had upwards of close to 30. Um, and so we've also had other along the road of our farming. Um, we've had Pygore goats, which um, are smaller goats. They are a pygmy angora cross, and they are for fiber. Um, we had six of those. We had two alpacas, um, and they all gave me beautiful fiber to spin. Um, we also had in our little hobby farm, we had, um, we raised heritage breed turkeys. We had a huge garden. We raised meat birds. Um, and along the way two um, miniature ponies came to stay with us. So we had quite a farm going on at one point. About five years ago, we sold our farm and we moved up here. I am, um, a wife. Uh, we've been married for almost 29 years, so it's been a long time. We have five grown adult children, um, and five, with the fifth one that's due any day now, grandkids. Um, and so we're excited about that. That's That's been fun. So um, we I spent many, many, many years homeschooling all five of our children, and so now that I uh, graduated the last one last year, I've had a little bit more freedom in doing some of the stuff that I love. Um, and I apologize, I am in my basement workroom here. So if you hear stomping or water running or anything else that's up above, um, and you might hear a dog whining every now and then because my border collie is trying to get in with me and I won't let her. So um, hopefully the noises won't be too distracting. So that is a little bit about me. Um, right now, I am uh, in the process of doing some shows coming up here. I have a fall festival tomorrow that I am doing, and then I have a trunk show, a Christmas trunk show in November. Um, I am blessed to live in, the, in, in an area. Um, we live in the middle of the Michigan Mitten on a lake, um, and I am blessed to be in a community where there is 
lots of outlets for my my creativity and so um, there's quite a few opportunities that I have to um, either show my stuff or sell my stuff and so I'm thankful for that but I do have some coming up here soon um, and and some of my products are in local shops here in mid-Michigan um, and I have a website um, which you can go to it's www.tailspinfarm.com now the website is pretty bare right now I have not um, I've been so busy with with creating that I have not loaded up the shop lately um, and that's kind of been a I'm trying to balance all this out between trying to get stuff into people's hands here and having stuff for the shop so I still have to figure that out um, I don't know if I need to do a I might have to do shop stuff and then stuff that I that I um, sell here in the in the area so I have to work on that a little bit more but I think this is always a work in progress when you're doing something like this so um, today I am simply jumping on to say hi to everybody, but also to show you some of the things I've been working on, some of the things I have available. Um, and if any of this is something you're interested in, I'm really pushing, um, not so much for myself, but for friends and people I know, I am pushing to shop small this year for holidays, shop local. Um, that's been sort of my mission since... 2020 started the way it did. Um, I have been on a quest to back away from mass produced stuff. Um, I have not set foot in a Walmart since February and it feels really good. So, um, it, if you're not one who typically would think about getting on Etsy or shopping small businesses around you, think about that this year because you are supporting people that have a passion and a love for creativity. Um, whether they're making the stuff or um, they're shop owners that bring stuff in for people, um, it does make a difference. And so that's sort of my mission. I've been, and I'll show you a few things. Um, I think I have at least one thing that I. I'm trying to use in some of my stuff and I, I got it through Etsy so I'll show you that um, so yeah let's get started I'm gonna show you um, whips and FOs so works in progress I have just one and then I have a few I have a lot of finished objects but I have two big finished objects so um, the the whips I'm working on right now and I'm going to show you, I have one that I'm actually working on. Um, and then I have patterns that I have purchased recently that I want to work on. So I'm hoping this winter things will slow down some for me and I'll be able to have time to, um, to work on some of these projects. I know I have a baby blanket to get finished here pretty quick. So, um, I, I need to work on that, but um, and we're supposed to have, rumor has it that we're going to have a hard winter this year here in, in Michigan. And I am a Four Seasons girl, so I say bring it on. Um, I, we enjoy we enjoy every season here at the lake, and um, every one of them seems to be beautiful. So uh, my whip today is, um, and I talked about this in my last video, and if you follow me on Instagram or Facebook, um, which you can find me anywhere um, at Tail Spin Farm, T-A-I-L, Spin Farm. Um, I had talked about how I, we are 30 miles or more from any big city here where we live. And so for me to jump in the car and go to a Hobby Lobby or Joanne Fabrics or anything like that, um, it, it's a drive, it's a haul. And in the beginning of all of this um, pandemic stuff that happened, Michigan was pretty shut down. We we were quite shut down um, to the point where none of these stores were open anyways. And so I um, went on to the Lion Brand website and I ordered two or three of their kits. Um, and I'll, I'll show you two today. And I think I have a third one somewhere around here that I need to work on too. But it was easy for me to get a pattern with yarn that would work for it. Um, Although I am a yarn, I love to go touch the yarn and see the yarn at the stores and stuff. Um, I don't buy a ton of yarn unless I'm supporting a small business because I make so much of my own. 
but this was just an easy way for me to do um, some knitting and crocheting without having to hit up a Hobby Lobby or a Joann's. So this is from the Line Brand website, and this is the Autumn League Pullover. And this, it's in black and white, so it's not a great picture. But this is just a simple pullover sweater. Um, I have never knit um, a full sweater my, on my own. Um, I, again, I, I am a crocheter. I'm a much better crocheter than I am a knitter. Um, I taught myself to knit, so I knit kind of weird, I guess, um, which is typical for me. I spin backward, or I spin left-handed instead of right-handed also. So I do things, I don't know, I just do things weird, I guess. So um, this will be my first um, knit sweater, full sweater, and I've got a good start to it. Hopefully I don't lose, nope, I didn't lose anything. And this is made with the Lion Brand. Let me find the yarn for you because it came with, it's the um, Lion Brand Collection Cotton Jeans in the color Gray Fade. And so this is a, um, I don't know. Oh yeah, I guess it is kind of showing up there pretty good. It's a little um, less blue in real life, but that's, that's pretty much it. And I am really enjoying it so far. Um, Again, I have never knit a sweater. I believe, I believe that this is top down because I'm seeing, um, I'm seeing these right here, which I believe are the shoulders joins right here. And so I think this is a top down sweater. Um, and I just started this, I started a few weeks ago, but I, I didn't spend too long working on it. So I got quite far on it. Um, and I am using, I think these are Knit Picks Circular Needle Set. I don't have it here to see, but I'm pretty sure that's what these are. Um, and so I am enjoying that one. And again, I um, I like the fact that I can get on the Line Brand website and get the entire kit. It might not have been what I would pick out um, to go into a store and pick it out, but it works for the where we were at. Um, the second one that I have finished, so that's my work in progress, um, and that's the only one. I finished, um, hopefully I don't knock all my stuff down here. I have a pile of stuff to show you guys. So I finished this shawl. Um, let me take it off my form here. This is called the Trendle Shawl, and it is by Carmen Hefferman. I'll try to link everything in the, and I have not blocked this yet, so I need to block it. But this is just a really nice shawl. I loved the, and it was a quick, easy, um, this one is a crochet, and it is at um, skill level, it is easy. Um, this is a crochet pattern, and it's a four row re repeat. And so once you got going on it, it was super simple and super relaxing. And I actually think I finished this in just a few days. Um, the yarn I used was a COVID purchase. Um, it was less, um, less traveled yarns, had a sale at one point and I bought a skein. Um, this is called the Moonstone colorway and it is um, a sock yarn. And so I had one skein and that's what I went looking. I had the yarn, found this pattern and it just really, um, and it's kind of a purpley tone. It's not showing up real good on this, but um, it worked perfect for this shawl. So that's that one, sort of an asymmetrical with the scallop edge on one side, straight edge on the other. Um, and it was just a lot of fun to knit. So I have that one done. Um, and I got that, that was a, I think this one was a paid pattern off Ravelry. So that one is an easy find. The next one I'm going to show you was, this one's a bigger one. Let me put this down. Um, this is a, another line brain kit that I got. And this is the sweater coat pattern or sweater coat cardigan. So this is a heavy, and I know I'm not in the right, 
place to stand up and show you this, but I can show you just like this. Um, this is a heavy yarn and this is super warm. Um, we are supposed to cool down here tonight and it's going to be chilly tomorrow. And I am thinking I'm going to wear this tomorrow to my outdoor show <laughs> that I'm doing. So this one was done with, um, let me get the yarn for you. It is, um, let me see what the yarn, I want to say it's color something. And now I can't find it. Color Made Easy is the name of the yarn. And so this is a heavier yarn. Um, and something's trying to get in through the door. Um, this is a heavier weight yarn. I liked this pattern. <sighs> My dog's trying to get in the room. We'll see if she accomplishes it. Um, I liked doing this pattern. Um, this was a great stitch. Um, it made, let's see if you can see it. It's a nice looking stitch. Um, and I'm trying to think, I think it was a half, just a half double. Um, oh, nope, this was not a half double. This was a chain two skip stitch, and it, it just looks really nice. It looks more intricate than that. I loved this pattern. I had issues with this pattern. Um, the sleeves, I ended up creating my own sleeve because what she had written and this pattern is not a new pattern by any means it's it's probably at least four years old um what she had written for the sleeves I tried and I tried and I tried and I tried and it kept getting smaller and smaller and smaller and so finally I did I I got on um and I think I'm not even sure that she is designing anymore um, but she was going through a, a house move and all this stuff. And so I messaged her and I did not hear back from her in the time that I wanted to get this finished. All I had left were the sleeves. So I kind of did some stalking on, on her pattern page on Instagram. And I found when she had launched it and when she had posted it. And I kind of scanned through the comments to see if anyone else said anything about the sleeves. Because again, I have been crocheting for over 30 years. So I, I'm pretty good at reading patterns and, um, but I know we all write and read patterns differently. That's why it's so important to have pattern testers. And so I did find some comments within that thread that said, these sleeves are not right. So I ended up messaging one of the gals that did the comment and I'm like, I don't mean to bother you, but can you help me just remember what you did for the sleeves? I said, all I could think to do is to just design my own as a straight sleeve. And that's basically all I did um, because she wanted to bring it in so much to the point where you had nothing left here. And she messaged me back. She was super nice. She had no idea who I was, but she did message me. And she said, you know, I did have problems with the sleeves because that was her comment. She said, and I can't remember what I did. She said, I think I end up, she checked her pattern for me. She said, let me check the pattern and see if I can find any notes. And she came back onto my comment and said, I didn't make any notes of what I did. She said, but I think what I did was just, it did exactly what you're going to do. Um, or what you're thinking of doing, which is to design my own sleeve and just do that. And so I did. Um, and so be aware of that. If you want to do this pattern, this, and you can message me if, if you decide to do this pattern and want to know what I did, you can message me. Um, but be forewarned, the sleeves, I don't think are correct in the pattern. Um, and so that is that one. Um, let's see what else I think that's it for big projects. Now we're going to move on to, um, some of my own stuff that I have going on, um, for, I wanted to show you before I did my show tomorrow. Um, I wanted to show you what I have available, um, and just give you a glimpse, show you what I'm doing. So I, I did this show this summer. Um, 
this festival show. It's at a local farmer's market and it was a really, really good show. And that's why I'm going back tomorrow. Um, it was one of my biggest shows ever. And I don't know if that's because of COVID and where everybody was this year, but this was an outdoor farm show. Um, and there were probably 500 people that week, that day. It wasn't even a weekend. It was a one day event. Um, and I just had a really great show. So I, one of the things I do with my Angora yarn is um, I do sell the yarn occasionally, but what I've found works best for me is um, I design jewelry um, with my Angora yarn in mind. And so I've been doing that for, I don't know, 10 or 15 years now, almost since the beginning of the Angoras. Um, I decided to come up with a way. Angora is a really warm, it's, um, they say about seven times warmer than sheep wool. So it's a super warm, warm yarn. You don't want to do um, sweaters with it for the most part. Some people do that, but it is going to be a hot sweater. Um, I do make hats and um, scarves, shawls, things like that with it. But I wanted to come up with a way to make things that people could wear year round with my with my yarn. And that's where I came up with the idea of the jewelry. Uh, and so I have been doing um, bracelets and earrings. Um, I do some necklaces um, like this. It would be like a choker. I do that with angora and beads. And so I have come up with all kinds of different designs and ways to use my angora. And that is what I like doing with it the most. Um, and so at the last show, I did take a bunch of my angora yarn but it didn't, I don't think I sold any of my hand spun yarn. I had Angora, I had Merino, I had Alpaca, I had some Pygora stuff, I had some hand dyed stuff. Um, I had some yarn that I had just bought the fiber and that's a cat, you can ignore her, she's angry. <laughs> um, and none of my yarn sold. So I decided to um, take all of my yarns that I had and they were random yardage. A lot of it was done. I did a couple of spin alongs this last year. I did a Christmas spin along last year. And then I did one like in January, February, I did a, um, I can't remember even what it was. Tour de Fleece, I think I did a spin along and I had a whole bunch of yarns made up and they didn't sell at the last show I was at. And I thought, well, what am I going to do? I don't want to take a bunch of yarn again and not sell it. So what I've decided to do is I took all of my hand spun yarn and I did some mixing with, so I kind of stash busted is what I did. I made hats. So I did, and the way I make my hats now, because yarn is time consuming. It is intense. Um, especially when you raise the animals, um, angora rabbits have to be groomed and they have to be, you know, you have to card the fiber, spin the fiber, any, and even when I buy fiber from, a, from someone, um, to support another small business and spin it, it's hours of work. And so what I've come up with is, and I have another video you can go back through, but I use my Addy knitting machine to make all my hats. Now it, it takes, a whole lot of less time than knitting or crocheting them. And I've already done the creativity in the yarn. So to create the hats with that has been really enjoyable th this last few weeks here. And so what I did was um, I ha essentially found a way um, to make, you're just making a long tube, S but you use your, what I did was use my hand spun yarn first and did rounds on it and got used up as much as I had of that. And then I just took some stash of my store-bought yarn and did that. So this is a double layer hat. Um, and the pom-poms I bought off, um, I had some from Amazon, I think. And then I was talking earlier about sp supporting small businesses. So I ordered pom-poms off from Etsy. Um, and she is Indie Fiber Art, and she makes super nice um, pom-poms, lots of different colors. 
And these are um, handmade in New York and they're faux, faux fur. Um, and I will link her below. But that's where I bought most of my um, pom-poms from this time around. So supported her and I added them. And again, this one I think is from somewhere else, but um, she had some beautiful ones. There's a white one that's just gorgeous. So all of the outsides of my hats are hand spun yarn done by me. And whether they are, um, and honestly, I don't remember what half the yarns are. A lot of them are merino. There's a lot of alpaca. I've got some angelica in here. I've got some, how is it called? Firestar or something like that. I've got angora bits and pieces. So each hat is, has just a little bit of something else in it. And then the inside is just store-bought Walmart yarn, probably. Um, and actually... Some of this is some nicer, um, like not handmade yarns, but where you'd get it, um, Hobby Bobby or something. So, and these are going to be super warm. So I have lots of colors. Um, I love this one. That one, I think that's Merino. Um, and again, these were all yarns that I had spun. There's Alpaca is the white. That's my Alpaca's. Um, and then I had, I think this is some Merino and stuff that was done, um, created by LCB is where I get, I just love her colors. Um, that's where I get a lot of her, um, a lot of my fiber from, if I'm going to just spin, not using my own, I will go to her because she has some beautiful color blends and colorways. So, um, there's one with one of the Etsy so that one, um, that one's got some silk in it, I know. This one's a little bit of a different color. So and this one has some Angora in it. And this is some I dyed. Um, I think that's Alpaca or Pygora that I dyed with the white. Um, this one has some Angora in it, Ray Angora. So I've got that one. And then this is Alpaca. Um, my alpacas and then this is some of created by LCB because I love this colorway. I can't think of what it's called though. Lavender lavender something maybe or lilac something. So these are going to be heavy winter hats and we'll see how they go tomorrow. Um, and if not, I will put them on my website. I also have an opportunity. Um, something else that I've done recently is I, I took a job outside the home for the first time in I don't know, 26 years I've been home as a mama. Um, and so I am working just a couple days a week at a local historical um, restaurant and shops here in, in Michigan. And they are super, super nice people. And they have um, just beautiful stuff there. And they're, they try to get Michigan artists in to, to show their stuff or to sell their stuff. And so they have offered me this week, if I want to bring any of my stuff that um, I want to set up there, they, they're they letting me do that. So these might go to the shop next week when I go to work with and see how many I have left. But So that's exciting um, where I can work somewhere and then have, have some of my stuff there too. So those are the hats I'm taking with me tomorrow. Um, and again, these are all hand spun and machine knit um, with... And, and some of them are, I realize like this one is completely, um, a hand spun. This is Angora inside and out. And it's just cause I had a lot of that color, um, because these were my, mine, but most of them are two ply, um, store bought with hand spun on the outside. So we'll see how those do, but they're just really cute. Um, and I was excited to come up with those and get those done this week. Um, so another thing I will show you real quick is um, just some of my jewelry. I have been working on um, a lot of earrings. Um, so this is all, these are all Angora. That's, that's kind of what I like to do with my jewelry. These are leaf shaped um, earrings that I designed and I actually did write this pattern. Um, so I've got leaf shape. I've got some hoops that I've done with Angora. You can kind of see the halo. That's what's awesome about Angora. It's got that beautiful halo. Um, I have 
Let's see, what other styles did I come up with? I've got the big circles and I've got little circles. Um, those are the littler ones. You can see those. And they're just crocheted. Um, I've got some teardrop ones that I did. And I think that's all the shapes. Oh, I have these hoops. Um, these are a little bit different than the other hoops. So those are on danglies. The other ones are the clip-in ones. So I have those that I've been working on. And then I've been just crocheting up um, bracelets. Lots and lots and lots of bracelets. And I like to use buttons. I like to use... Um, I'll go to the antique stores and find antique pins um, or like this one came from the local antique store. It's just a pin that I love to put on mine um, bracelets. I did some Tunisian crochet <clears throat> I've started and I can kind of see. Yeah, that's Tunisian crochet. So I started making some cuffs. Um, some of them have some plates on them. Some of them have some buttons and antique buttons that I find I'll put on them. So these are just really, they're quick, they're easy. Um, I just think they're lovely and I love wearing them. I might have to snag this one <laughs> the hell that I see it. Um, so yeah, they're, they're soft. Um, they're lightweight for the most part. You know, the, the buttons or the brooches put a little bit of weight on them, but they're just so soft to wear. And so I just love these cuffs. So I have a lot of those. I have um, I have snap ones, which you don't really have to undo the snap. You can you can just pull it over typically, but I don't want to stretch these out. So um, there's that one. This is a, a thinner one, and it's just the soft on the one side. So I have those um, again, just lots of. Um, these are ceramic buttons that I get. And my goal is to, again, get on Etsy. I know there's lots of button makers out there. Um, I would like to find a reasonable priced one so that I can add them to some of my things. This one is a medallion pattern um, that, I can kind of see it well. It's a medallion pattern here, and then it's just a straight back. So I have lots of different sizes, lengths, widths. Um, let's see, I had I got a red one here. So, and these just kind of go with everything. I have a white with a button. Um, so that is what I'm doing with these. I think that's all my shapes. Um, so that is going with me tomorrow also. Um, I think that about covers it now i've touched base on everything um i hope you enjoyed this video and i hope you got some information that you didn't know before um, if you have any questions you can put them down below in the comments um, i would love it if you're not already following me you can follow me i'm on facebook instagram twitter or i'm sorry i'm not on twitter right now i pulled myself back from that one facebook and instagram is where you can find me um, the most and my website. Um, oh, another thing. I've showed this before. Um, before I close up shop here. Um, I also um, wrote a book. I wrote a children's book many years ago. My daughter, who is now married. And um, she's the one about to give birth to another baby. Um, she is an amazing artist. And this was sort of a project her and I did together. Um, and I don't know, I probably wrote this book at least 10 years ago, maybe longer. And then she illustrated it for me. And so I have these books available. It's Alice Has an Idea. It's going to be flipped for you, I know. but um, And this is a children's book. And this goes through, it's essentially the story of my life. Um, although I've never owned sheep, I, I had to do the book in a way that... Um, I couldn't do Angora rabbits because a lot of people don't even know they exist like I did. So I used a generic fiber animal, which is sheep. Everyone knows that yarn comes from sheep. And so that's what I wrote the book around. But it's just about um, a gal who learns how to spin. 
and gets fiber animals and then she learns how to knit and um, it's just a really cute book about following your dreams um, and so I also have these available and these are available on Amazon you can see my daughter and myself there um, they're available on Amazon right now and I have copies here if you wanted one they would make an excellent Christmas gift um, I am a book junkie I love books I love children's books um, every month my grandkids get a new book book for me in the mail um, and so if if you have a child in your life that you would like to get a book for I have these available um, that you can order or you can message me and I'll get, I'd be glad to get you one so that was one more thing I wanted to add in there so I hope that this video finds you all well um, holidays are upon us I am hoping to do a few more videos here before the end of the year hopefully it won't be two or three months before I see you next um, and I hope you guys are all staying safe and healthy and happy. And I am so glad you could join me today. I hope to see you next time. Thanks. Bye.